Hello everyone, welcome back to Major Hi-Fi. I'm Luke. Today we're going to be talking about the Empire Ears Odin IEM. This is a tribrid. Try saying that three times fast. IEM. Um, we're going to get into what that means if you don't already know in just a minute. Uh, and yeah, these run for a pretty penny. They are $33.99. Um, and they are definitely a very coveted IEM. Empire Ears has quite a prestigious reputation in the IEM market for, in my opinion, a good reason. So yeah, let's go on ahead and get into it. Oh my god, I'm holding the box the wrong way. There it is. All right, so these are a tribrid IEM, which means that they have three different types of drivers in them, and they are quite a big ticket item, I guess you could say. They're definitely one of the pricier IEMs you can buy. I'll definitely be kind of looking at how these compare to a couple other IEMs in that price range, and yeah, let's take these out of the box. The box on this is kind of nifty. Let's see if I can show you. First of all, we have the IEMs and the cable, very pretty in here. We're gonna take a closer look in just a minute. And then there's a fun little like drawer that comes out. Uh, and then here we have, whoops, we have the case and the ear tips and all those kinds of things. Definitely a very sturdy case. This is a pretty hefty uh, metal case. It is not super light, but that's not a bad thing because I would want my IEMs at this price to be well protected. And inside of here we get a cleaning cloth, which is a nice addition. We get these final audio ear tips in quite a cool sort of metal, I don't know, formation going on here. And then we get a cleaning tool. All right, so let's take these out of here. So here are the IEMs. They come with this kind of uh, fabric braided cable. Got this nice like, uh, this is the Empire Ears logo here. That's uh, a nice touch on the cable. And then, yeah, let's take a closer look at these IEMs. They've got this sort of liquid metallic backing. It's just really like insane to look at. I have no idea how this is achieved. It's probably witchcraft of some sort. Uh, it looks absolutely beautiful. I don't know if like all of these pairs look the same or if each pair is unique, you know, in terms of like the little sort of intricacies of the designs, but both of these actually look a little bit different. And as you can see, one of them has, uh, they each have kind of different parts of the logo on them on each IEM. And they're just absolutely stunning. These have got to be one of the prettiest pairs of IEMs I've ever seen. They remind me kind of of, um, we did a review of the VE7, which has sort of a metallic, similarly like sparkly and backing to it. This definitely sort of follows that path. And then they also remind me of some of those Canera IEMs that have the really sort of painted looking backing going on. And yeah, the fit is a familiar kind of smoothed out, typical universal IEM fit. Uh, nothing you've never seen before, but it's that nice snug kind of in-ear feel that doesn't hug your ears too, too tightly, but it's definitely gonna not fall out at any point and has a very, very smooth settle in time. I will show you what these look like in my ears under my insane amount of hair. I'm getting a haircut, I'm working on it, <laughs> trying to get rid of the surfer bum look, but you're stuck with it for now. So these use 11 drivers. First of all, we have five proprietary balanced armature drivers. We have two for the low mid, two for the mid, and one for the high mid. Then we have four premium electrostatic drivers, two for the high and two for the super high. And then finally, we have the Empire Ears patented W9 Plus subwoofer dynamic drivers for the sub bass and bass. So you've got quite a few things going on in the mix there. These have an impedance of three ohms, so they are very, very, very loud. So please be careful with your volume. And they have a frequency response of five hertz to 10 kilohertz. All right, you know what time it is. Let's talk about how they sound. So for starters, on the sound stage, I had pretty high expectations for these because most other IEMs in this price range I've heard have had very, very, very wide sound stages, and this is no exception. It definitely expands far beyond the typical width of an IEM, so similar to IEMs from 64 Audio or Vision Ears, other companies that have some of the kind of like top IEMs in the market that definitely go for an extremely wide sound stage that does not totally sound like you would expect it to, given that an IEM is not usually able to achieve quite the level of width that maybe you know you would get from 
other headphones basically because they don't by nature are not uh, insanely wide but some of these really high-end IEMs do manage to really push things out to a level that seems almost implausible if you really tried to fathom it, but these do that. They are super, super, super wide. The sonic space created by these is a very kind of room feel, a very big room feel, an in-person kind of live music sound to it a lot of times, for sure. I was listening to Joni Mitchell's song, Sex Kills, and one of my favorite songs of the moment, or just maybe all time, and the drums have this incredible kind of swirling sensation around my head with the different tom rolls and cymbal crashes and whatnot. And there was just this general feeling of surround sound and like I was becoming sort of smaller than the composition. These tiny IEMs were creating a music experience that was just way bigger than me, which is a super, super cool feeling. It's a very consuming sound stage, almost overwhelming at times in a good way with how much sort of separation there is. And just like I said, the massiveness of it, it really does dwarf the listener in a really, really cool way so yeah if you want wide realistic room feel then these are a great option they definitely are on par with other sort of like top of the line IEM sound stages so like we reviewed the VE7 recently that was a great IEM sound stage the U18S uh, the new U6T all of those are gonna have sound stages that are above average for an IEM Canera Nana that's another one with a really great sound stage this sits on that same tier of just a great airy big soundstage on an IEM that definitely feels really, really tight and well separated. Hey guys, Luke here. Just wanted to pop in and say that if you're enjoying this video, it would be great if you could subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when we make new content and hit the like button and leave us a comment if you have any suggestions or questions or anything like that. I would love to talk to you guys more. We would really love some help growing the channel and you know, just want to make sure that we're reaching our audience and whatnot. So yeah, any support is greatly appreciated and let's get back to the review. So the low end on the Odin definitely has a nice boom to it, but it's not a super intense one. Um, it seems to kind of have an awareness of the sub-frequencies, but it knows when to make use of them and it knows to be fairly conservative in order to not overwhelm its kind of inherently airy sound. I mentioned the track He, H-E, by J. Paul in a previous review of, I think, like the NS9. That's one of my favorite tracks to test low end on. It's got a great stereo bass synth and a really cool sort of drum pattern going on. This definitely gave that song, especially its, you know, low end, its bass elements, a nice growl, but, you know, it kept them contained enough. It had definitely a tight grip on them at the end of the day. Uh, so I think that's going to be a very big plus for people, you know, in the audiophile world who want bass, but they really do want it to be done with a very, very tight grip on it because sort of any sense of looseness can create mud or disrupt the rest of the mix. So this does a great job of giving you that nice, uh, deep, full bass sensation without kind of pushing it outside the confines of what is able to happen without overwhelming the rest of the mix. So the mid-range on the Odin, leveling-wise, is not unlike anything I've heard before. You know, you've got the high mid pushed forward with some slight coloring to round out the edges. The low mid is pushed back a little bit to make sure things aren't stuffy and to give the mix some room to breathe, but not so much so that we're losing any warmth. That's kind of a pattern I've seen before in terms of frequency response. So the leveling is definitely sort of a typical, like not overly committing to any sort of signature, just a bit of push on the high mid, a bit of a cut on the low mid. It's pretty simple. What is not so simple and ordinary is how realistic and impactful it is in the mid-range. It's a very, very uh, kind of like cracking of the whip that goes on with a lot of percussion on this IEM that makes it a very, very intimate, up-close experience. They're able to make ear candy out of the most kind of subtle, underpinned elements, things that maybe you've heard of the mix before but have never been really brought to your attention at that level. They do a great job of pulling detail out and also pushing it forward. It's definitely a mid-range that creates that sense of realism, that very up-close and personal uh, feel through its ability to be very impactful and have a nice, uh, not just a nice attack to it, but also just an overall very, very all-encompassing detail um, and just sort of like not a single piece is missed or ignored. So it's a very, very intricate mid-range response in terms of its dynamics and its abilities. And then like I said, its leveling is not uh, taking it in any extreme directions. There's not an extreme cut or boost going on, uh, just a pretty like kind of leveled, balanced uh, mid-range. 
All right, so the high end on the Odin kind of reminded me of that that I've seen on, say, like the 64 Audio U18S, which I'm bringing up again, not because it really reminded me a lot of this, but there were certain characteristics they had in common. Um, and one of them was that the high end on this is definitely bright, but it's able to have that strong sheen without having any sense of like hiss or kind of irritating crackle to it, which is definitely an important thing to avoid. So instead of creating any harshness, the high end on this just leads to a lot of kind of like hyper realism, a sort of cascading feeling to the music at many times. Uh, so it's got a nice fluidity to it, a nice kind of ability to sort of bend and to create a very kind of flowing, just sort of meandering feel to music that's, you know, bright but is smooth in its transitions and able to really create a pleasant brightness and not something that is going to feel like it is overwhelming. Overwhelming in the bad way. So vocals are given a very breathy sort of live performance feel, especially on more minimal mixes where the vocal is really the center of attention. Uh, it's given a very, very realistic feel, similar to sort of how the mid-range contributes to that. The high end on here is able to really bring things to life. The top end of percussion is definitely kicked up a notch to create that kind of well, I use the word crackle negatively now, so I guess I can't use it positively. That would sound contradictory, wouldn't it? It has a nice kind of hair standing up on the back of your neck type of extension to a lot of those more attack heavy elements in the high end where it can get that really crisp top end that definitely fills things out, but once again is giving you just the right amount of engagement where it's not pushing it too much. So overall, the Odin is a super impressive IEM. I think that the combination of three different types of drivers makes this have a very uh, coherent sound in a way. I feel like they're well selected for the different areas of the frequency spectrum. For the price and sort of the Empire Ears, you know, name, its legacy, uh, I think these really do live up to it. It's an IEM that definitely will impress even the most sort of seasoned listeners. You know, you've been doing this for years, you've heard all the IEMs, this will still, you know, give you that wow factor. It's going to really transport you and create, like any great I am should, a kind of new experience of the music while still fully respecting the original composition and giving a sort of, you know, accurate uh, homage to each song. So yeah, I am a big fan of this one. I can see why it's so popular and I would be happy to answer any other questions you have about it. Please leave me a comment and let me know if there's anything I missed or that you want to know about. If you want to compare this to other IEMs, per usual, I will link to Major Hi-Fi's IEM ranking tool. You can compare this to IEMs by price, sound signature, uh, you know, company, all of those kinds of things. And yeah, I'll be back very soon with some more videos and reviews. And until next time, happy listening.